as a follow-on to the vampire deck landing, we moved on to a project which was a bit of very, I should say, innovative. Because the undercarriage on a normal naval aircraft requires to be strengthened to take the high vertical velocities involved in deck landing, this represents about 7% of the all-up weight of an aircraft. So it was thought that if we could get rid of this, that 7% could be utilized in either extra fuel, extra armament, or whatever. And the idea was mooted to land this on a rubber mat on the airfield, which was basically a, a mat whose layout was almost like the outer part of a normal car tire, that sort of rubber. Under, that was stretched laterally, and underneath it were about five layers of firemen's hoses, in effect, at varying low pressures. And there was going to be, instead of the six to eight, or, or even ten wires on some aircraft carriers, which would be nine inches off the ground, um, and picked up by the arrestor hook, there was only going to be one wire in this case, which was going to be three feet off the deck. And it would be picked up as the aircraft flew over it at speeds which were going to be higher than the normal deck landing speeds. Because we could afford to do this, because in the event of missing the wire, you could just carry on, continue, and have another go. Well, we had to work up to this, and part of the first initial workup was to see how well we could judge height. And I was asked to do about a hundred approaches on the runway here at Farnborough at a given height, with the undercarriage down in case we um, made a mess of it. But after a hundred runs, the average error throughout was plus or minus five inches. So that it was deemed that this was, uh, was on. And we eventually carried out the first landing on Jersey Brow, which is still extant here at Farnborough. From there, we progressed onto an aircraft carrier with the rubber deck and brought in pilots of other experience from below average experience up to a high experience. And with this cross section, we gave them some initial runs here on the deck at Farnborough, then onto the ship. And there we did over 200 landings on the ship without any problems at all. So the system was a success. The practicality of it was another matter. Besides the advantage of getting rid of some of the excess weight, one of the big bonuses was that once the aircraft was pulled off the rubber mat onto its trolley, which was a very shallow trolley, and brought down into the hangar deck, we could stow twice as many fighters there as we could those with undercarriages. So this was a huge gain to have twice your fighter complement. At the end of the day, one has to say it was very successful but it was too radical, and it was not progressed. But one wonderful spin-off that came from it was, <coughs> while we were trying to work out what we were going to do if the aircraft missed the wire and carried on, and there were other aircraft being catapulted at the front at the same time, um, we had the chance of a collision, and we didn't want to make the operation too stilted so you couldn't both land and, and catapult at the same time. So while we were mulling this over, somebody drew a little doodle on a piece of paper at the meeting of what turned out to be the, the germ of the idea for the angled deck, which totally revolutionized naval aviation. 
So it all came from this flexible deck project. So this was a huge contribution.